Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 22 in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. And we have completed the Getting Started with Rails guide uh, in our previous video. So if you go to guides.rubyonrails.org, Getting Started with Rails, you can take a look at the first 21 or so episodes for um, a tour through that. And I'm going to, in my um, application here, I'm going to check out a branch and push a branch that kind of uh, keeps that Rails getting started guide uh, kind of in its own as its own entity so that when we make modifications to the application in these upcoming videos that we still you can still go and check out the getting started guide branch for that state of the application. So we're going to get check out dash B and then push to the origin. And then we'll check main back out. And now if we go into the, the application or the, the Git repo here, we can see that we've got um, the main and getting started guide as our branches. So we can make um, additional changes while kind of freezing that getting started guide in time. So the, what we're going to do in this video is start taking a look at um, what you can do with Turbo. So uh, a bit of a history lesson from the mid life cycle of Ruby on Rails 4. Um, Rails came out with uh, Turbo Links, which was kind of an optional add in that um, you could d use that in conjunction with Rails UJS and do things like uh, make forms use the data remote attribute and um, you, you could get some JavaScript like performance on your front end while having minimal um, additional development to do so. It was um, mixed reviews on it, um, especially back then. And then Turbolinks was a mainstay of Ruby on Rails version 5 and Ruby on Rails version 6. Uh, Ruby on Rails 7, out of the box, by default, comes with Hotwire, which is a combination of uh, Turbo, which is the uh, the replacement for the old Turbolinks um, framework, and then Stimulus, which is a kind of a modest front-end framework for allowing for interaction with the events in your application. So we're going to start using Turbo some. We did uh, make some changes related to Turbo. If you go back to the videos on destroying an article and destroying a comment, we had to make some modifications. Instead of the data remote attribute, we um, or not data, data confirm attribute, we were using data turbo confirm and um, for some of those data turbo method. So we're going to um, now try to make the, uh, the comments in our application broadcast to their parent article. So if we go in here, I'm going to start with, uh, as we've been doing throughout this process, uh, making this as test driven as possible. So we're going to go into our articles application system test and write a, um, a new, a couple of new uh, methods that deal with creation of a comment and destruction of a comment. So I'm going to um, pause, write those tests, they're going to fail because we haven't implemented the functionality yet, but then see if we can do the action to get these to pass. All right, so we've got our um, proposed tests created here, and they're being done on the, the browser-driven application system test case scenario because they're um, 
related to turbo functionality, which is kind of in the browser and client side functionality. So we need to, in order to validate that this is happening as expected, we need to validate this in a browser context. So what we did is we, we start by visiting the article URL in both cases, and then I'll break a line here. Um, in the case of the uh, create, we moved our, we had before a spam comment and a sp spam commenter that were local variables in the destroying a comment section. I just moved them up into the setup block, changed the local variables into instance variables, and then using the same Tech, uh, commenter and body text here. We're going to create the comment outside of the page context. So this would be the equivalent of somebody creating it server side uh, via the Rails console or somebody in a different a different user creating it and it being committed to the database. So and then uh, we're asserting that the, the text isn't in the DOM before we create it. We create it and then we assert that the text is there after the creation. And then likewise on the destroy side of things, we're going to pick a particular comment, assert that it's in the DOM before we destroy it, destroy the comment outside of the context of the page, and then assert that the, um, the commenter and body of that comment that we're getting from our, fix our comments fixture here is no longer in the DOM. So we'll save this, we'll run it and it will fail. So we expect just the two failures. So the first one expected to find the expected not to find the um, the text after we've destroyed it it's still there and then on the other side of things um, expected to find our um, text about the um, the spam comment and it's not there so the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to try to make this uh, this test pass so the first thing we're going to go is into our comments, our comment model here. So we've got include visible belongs to article, and we're going to add to this broadcasts to article. What this will do is whenever there's a, uh, a CRUD related change to a comment, create, um, yeah, creation, destruction, or update, it will um, broadcast that to the article that it belongs to. The second part of this is that we need to make sure that we can identify the particular comment from, uh, from the DOM. So we'll go to our comments section here, and we've got the, um, we already have in place here, div with an ID equal to the DOM ID of the comment. So that is the, uh, we had, it wasn't in the Rails getting started guide, but we added it in order to make, make it possible for us to identify which comment we were uh, trying to destroy in our, um, in our test case here. So we've got that in place. And then the third part that we need to add is on the articles show page. We need for here a ERB tag turbo stream from article. We'll see where that gets us in terms of our test, and then we'll we'll look at it on um, in the browser as well. Um, let me make sure that I've not running a server right now. We'll see if this makes our test pass. All 
All right, so we've got one failure. And one pass here. So the comment was not getting inserted into the DOM. Let me throw in a debugger statement here. So it's this situation. So we are paused here. We can see that the spam comment is not present here. If we look at articles, comment, article.comments.last, the comment does exist here. So um, I anticipate that we need to um, make the, the similar to what we did with the, uh, the comment having a DOM ID that allows us to identify it. We need to do the same thing in the articles show view. Uh, on the opposite side of things, it looks like it is successfully removing our comment when we do that. So I'm going to, um, let me continue here our failure. And if we look at, I'm going to move the debugger statement from the creation, add it to destroy. So we can see that the, the comment did get removed from the DOM when we did that. So the, the ID, the div ID of the comment is working for us. Let's see what we can do now to make the, um, the creation portion of this work. So we're going to go into our articles show view so go into our show action and we're going to wrap this whole section here similar to what we we've got this and then close the div off this might make some of our um, some of our existing controller tests fail but we'll focus on our system tests now and see if that solves our problem. So we've still got the one failure. Let me move the debugger statement out of here temporarily.
So yeah, it's still not broadcasting to that section, or it's broad. It's not inserting into that section. I might need to add a, a another ID that indicates the comments. So here in the show method, I'm going to go in and before this article dot comments, we're going to do a div ID equals comments. Important that I spell that correctly. Close it up. See if that resolves our failure. All right, so everything is passing on the test. Let's take a look at the, um, or at least on the system test, let's run our non-system tests. Nothing broke there. Now let's take a look at the uh, behavior in the um, the application itself. So it's one thing for something to, uh, to pass the test. Let's make sure that it's also um, passing the, the visual test that we would expect it to pass here. So I've got two browsers up side by side. One is Chromium, one is Chrome. Uh, let me kick off the server here. And now we're going to go to articles, which is our root route. And let's say that I'll create a new article here. Let me authenticate. So I'll create my article here and then we'll visit this on both sections here. So what I'm expecting is that when I am Connell and I write, that's modalism, Patrick. when I create the comment here, it should display on this other browser if things are working the way we intend it to. And we can see that that, that worked. We'll go back and have Donald write, come on, Patrick. And we create the comment. Now let's, um, let Patrick write a comment. So I've got another comment here from Patrick. I'm going to add that in. Now we're going to delete Patrick's comment and it should disappear from our other side of things. So we'll destroy this comment and it's gone. So that is um, basic broadcasting from a child to a parent with the, the comments action. So uh, we'll stop our server here, re make sure our test all is passing. It is, we'll review our status here. So we've changed the, the model comment. We'll do a diff here to show what we've done. So we've changed the show section to add that turbo stream from um, Rails 
uh, helper method here for article that hooks us up and makes sure that our web sockets and everything are communicating. And then the, um, the article we're wrapping in a DOM ID with the article from the article model there. We changed the nesting so that all that could take place. And then in our article comments, this is again necessary for it to work unless you configure things differently, which I would recommend against for Rails models. Use uh, Rails, the, the whole Rails stack, use convention over configuration. So um, we've got the div ID for the article. We've got the div ID for the comments collection on the article. And then in each comment, we'll get to that point in a second. That's just more nesting, ch changing the, the nesting of the, the view. Um, maybe I need to go back up. Models, article show. I guess we, no, we, we didn't change comments show because comments show already had the DOM ID for each comment. So that nesting there, the uh, article ID, the comments ID, and then each comment having its own DOM ID sets you up so that out of the box, this will work for you. In our test, we uh, refactored out the spam commenter to make it a an instance variable and, and the body uh, in the setup method so that we have access to it when we want to go in and create the the new comment in our system test so this is our create test we went in tested that the uh the content wasn't in the dom we created the um the record outside of the browser context and then asserted that it was there um, and then went the opposite direction for destroy asserted that it was there destroyed it and then asserted that it was not there and that leaves us with what we've got here. We'll commit. Write our commit message. All right, so we've got our commit message here explaining how we set this up. We will save it. Push to the remote. remote. Make sure I'm on main. I am. And we'll see you in the next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.